Yo, fit pros, welcome back to the DTF podcast where we turn personal trainers into fitness professionals. We are your hosts, Dayton McPherson and Kyle Radoon. Today's episode is actually a listener question episode from Brittany about the best methods for keeping your clients accountable. This is going to be a fun one. We say that every single time, but this is our first listener question. So we're excited to get this one started off. So let's start off with a little small talk. Kyle, what's going on, man? Uh, you know, same old, same old. I uh, actually was really interested because you're going away out of the country, but we'll ask you that in a second. Uh, I'm really excited about this listener question because I want to get more involved with the listeners. And we've been getting a lot of DMs and it was like, hey, could you help me with this? Hey, can you help me with that? Uh, so today's episode really I'm excited about because we took a direct question from a, a trainer that's in the trenches working every single day. Uh, they were having a, problems with keeping their clients accountable, getting results. And I think this is a, a common problem with trainers everywhere is we work with people. We think that, okay, we told them what to do. We showed them the right things to do, and then they don't get the results and, or they kind of are inconsistent coming in and out. Right. So like, huge topic to to discuss um but yeah no so that's definitely exciting uh what uh what's going on with you uh so like kyle said i am going out of the country for about two weeks uh going to london and paris with my wife so that'll be really fun uh i've been to london before haven't been to paris uh lived in ireland for a little while so i was able to go to london um we're just hanging out in london with one of my friends adrian and, and his wife and his kid and then we're going to Paris, hopefully just eating a bunch of good food. And for me, not exercising <laughs> and, and having a good little break, which I definitely need. But other than that, fitness wise, uh, my, my studio, we just opened a couple of weeks ago, the, the membership side, and we just started our small group training classes, which is great. So it's, it's very, very similar to like a, a CrossFit slash Orange Theory, where it's the same class in the beginning of the day, all the way through, just have different members jumping in. And the only specialty class that we have currently is a mobility class, which surprisingly is our most popular class, which mm. is kind of cool. Um, so that's our only specialty one, but excited to get small group up. I, I, I'm not teaching them. I have uh, an individual who kind of took the, the reins on that. She's doing a great job with it, trying to get some of not only members, but older clients back in or, or people off the street. So that's kind of what's going on in my studio. Excited to get that going. But uh, yeah, let's jump into this episode because like you said, with our clients, <laughs> it's really, really easy to, to get them in, get them maybe to register for a program. They're super excited. But unfortunately, we only see them between one and three hours a week. What are you doing with the other 99.9% .9 of your week in order to see results with that client? And that's really what this is about. They work hard when they come in, they listen to you when, when they come in as well. But like outside of that, how can we help them to reach their goals? And that's the toughest thing is like making sure that they're doing the right things outside of the couple hours that they may spend with you. So we're going to go over some tips and tricks that Kyle and I have developed over the years. Uh, before the episode started, I, I told Kyle, he's the guy that's in the trenches more frequently than I am these days. So I want him to really kind of expand on his knowledge and I'll, I'll jump in where need be, you know, trainers for the most part, they, they do just train their clients and then it's like hands off for the rest of the week or the rest of their program. And we're trying to convince you that that's not the way to go sometimes. And we're going to just talk about some of those things. So Kyle, why don't you kick us off, uh, talk about some areas that you think that some of our coaches out there should focus on to make sure that their clients are seeing results. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, so I will say I, uh, I messed up our introduction there because I went right into the lead in about the question and totally didn't answer your question about myself. But you know what? No one wants <laughs> to talk about me anyway. So let's yeah, talk no one cares about, about the, you, man. Let's talk about the question. Uh, so kind of what I was saying in the, the lead in there was, you know, we have these clients, we get them to sign up and then they're there with us. One, two, even three hours a week is considered a lot for training. Uh, if you have someone then three, three times a week to see you, uh, that's controlling a lot of their exercise program, but how many hours are actually in a week, right? So you got a couple hundred hours in a week, 160 or something, I forget the number. I'm, uh, I'm and I'm only seeing you for right three. Now. So, you know, what percent of three hours of the week is that? 168 hours in a week. Right. So pretty much, if you're only in control of three of those hours, you don't have a very good stronghold on their behaviors and what they do outside of the gym. You can put the best program together, 
You can do everything right. But if they are literally couch potatoes, eating potato chips, not doing any of the activities or paying attention to their diet or maybe getting on the floor and doing mobility while they're doing Netflix, <laughs> you know, there's certain things that you can incorporate outside of the gym. And that's, I mean, I snuck in one there, like yeah. to get my people to stretch. I'm like, do you watch Netflix? And nine out of 10 say, yeah, for about at least 30 to 60 minutes every single night. And I'm like, you can't cool. stretch while you watch Netflix. Yeah. Oh, boom. So that's like, you know, one little tip and trick there, but it's finding ways to incorporate fitness and health into their lives outside of the hours they see you. Because if you can commit, uh, can get them to commit to that, you will see success regardless of how good you are on the gym floor. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, I like to talk about small like check-ins with people too, which is really great. Whether that be a weekly progress check-in, if you have a scale, an in-body, something in your space that you can check to see how they're doing. So if you have an in-body that measures body fat percentage, uh, visceral fat level, things of that nature, I recommend not doing that every single week. For me, that's more of like a four week thing. If you want to weigh people every single time they come in, that takes 30 seconds. That's great. And checking in with them right in the beginning of their session as well. You know, what have you done since the last time that we saw one another? And if I can be frank with you, most of them will say nothing. And if we can flip that mindset into small progressions and small victories and small wins, that's where they're going to see the biggest results. So if you see somebody twice a week, they don't do anything in between their sessions for me. And I ask, what have you done? They say nothing. I'll say, okay, here's my challenge for you. Between Monday and Friday, which is when our sessions are Monday and Friday on Wednesday, I want you to walk through these doors and I want you to do 10 minutes of cardio. That's it. And see if they do it. And if it's Wednesday and it comes up, they don't come in. That's when you can send them a message on Thursday. Be like, Hey, everything okay? I noticed you didn't come in on Wednesday. They might say something along the lines of, oh, things just got really hectic. That's okay. Today's another day. See if you can come in here and do it. I'll be here until five. Come check in with me. Like small, small incremental things to make them achieve something. It's not, uh, you know, it's, it's not change their entire diet in the first four weeks that you meet with them. It's not build them up to a 500 pound deadlift. It's just, it's just like lifting, right? It's small incremental progress. It's progressive overload, but progressive overload of their entire health and wellness. It's it's progressive overload for behaviors. There we go. Um, if you are trying to change your behaviors, you have Speak, to change it. Speaking of behaviors, I'm, I'm going to cut you off. How long does it take to build a habit and change behaviors, Kyle? Um, oof. Seven, seven days, 10 days. So studies show I, that I forget what the study is. studies show that it's typically about 90 days to form a habit. So a lot of the times gyms will have three month commitments for personal training, 90 days. That's why. So in, in your sales process too, or when you're doing your consultations, if your gym does have a, a 30 or sorry, a three month or a 90 day commitment, I will tell people straight up the 90 days is not to take money from you for 90 days. 90 days is for you that you can see results. You feel better. You can look in the mirror and build habits on yourself. I want you to see results, not by one single session, come in and be like, okay, this information is great. I'm going to do this on my own now. No, the hell you're not. You need to come in and see me for at least 90 days so I can help you through this process. All right, uh, continue. Sorry. No, I just well, you're to right on. That so the 90 days, absolutely uh, to build a habit. I was thinking more of uh, more of like that addiction, like change your habits. If mm. you can commit to something every day for a week, you're more likely to reach your 90 days too. So what I'm trying to do when I have that new client, yes, we're going to sign them up for a 90 day program. I'm sure that's something we'll talk about as far as keeping them committed, like long-term. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like the adherence to my program, I'm looking at trying to change things, like literally get them within that like week or two. So that's where my brain went, but you're right. Yeah. That's long-term commitment for sure. sure. Um, and then you know, basically what you said there is you were trying to get things that were easy to complete. Uh, I'm always looking to give my clients wins as much as they can, because the truth is there's going to be losses and no one ever wants to talk about the negative when we talk about our fitness and health, because we want to stay positive. We're always go, go, go. You're doing so great. We're making progress. I like to remind them of all those little progresses or along the way so that when we do have that mishap where they just. They took the week off, they ate pizza, they didn't feel like doing anything, they kind of just felt awful. 
I can have that conversation and be like, you did this so well, X, Y, Z, we can get past this and we can come back from it. So mm -hmm. if you're always harp on like what they do wrong and don't have all those million wins built up, uh, we talked about that emotional bank account recently, okay. same idea. I'm just trying to keep their emotions high and they're going to be more excited about continuing and progressing, right. which is going to get them the results they're looking for, right? We, we talk about SMART goals and forgive me, I can't remember the acronym for SMART. Do you remember what it is, Kyle? <sighs> Specific. Specific. Measurable. Measurable. Accountable. Accountable. Action, either out actionable or... Um, this is really bad. Whatever. <laughs> So, uh, Kyle's going to look it up, but smart goals are basically having small actionable goals that we can chalk up wins for every single week. And that's what Kyle is saying. It's like we were talking about with progressive overload. If you want to deadlift 500 pounds and you've never deadlifted before, your goal isn't to deadlift 500 pounds in a four week cycle. It's to deadlift 10 pounds more in a four week cycle. So that's what we're trying to get to our clients. If somebody comes to me and they want to lose a hundred pounds, my goal is not to have them lose a hundred pounds. My goal is to have them lose five pounds. So what are the things that we can do to help them lose five pounds? Coming in two times a week and doing one time a week uh, on cardio, they could keep their diet exactly the same. And I can almost guarantee they're going to lose five pounds if they're an inactive person. Okay, you lose those five pounds, check it off. There's our goal. That's going to be fantastic. Like celebrate those big wins. I think it's also important for coaches to realize that you need to celebrate wins in people's programming and doing their sessions too. So we talked about in a previous episode, writing workouts and the importance of writing workouts down and keeping track of how much weight that your clients are lifting, the rep ranges, all that stuff. So when I do my client sessions, when they come in and they hit a new deadlift PR for a five by five, damned, <laughs> I'm going to tell them that they did that and and they lifted more than the last time they did it eight weeks ago. If, if you're not telling them that like how do they know they're getting better because let me let you in on a little secret your clients don't know how much weight they're lifting when you hand them a dumbbell or a barbell they don't give a shit they they don't care they don't listen but if you congratulate them to them they see the improvements and they'll keep coming back if they're getting stronger absolutely yeah. um i want to circle back because i actually i'm embarrassed that we didn't say this one without uh, i i don't i don't really say smart very often goals so but smart goals are well so we'll preach smart goals because i know what it is and the purpose of it is to make actionable achievable goals that you can complete and all these wins we're talking about but the acronym technically is specific measurable achievable relevant and relevant. time bound and now time the bound. reason why of course right achievable I think I said attainable, but right, same thing. Uh, relevant and time bound. I think the time bound is the most important one because when we're setting these small goals, the small goals are those 30, 60, 90 day goals where mm. a lot of people come in and their goals, their big goal is on 30, 60 or 90 days. And I like to spin that around and be like, oh, no, no, your five pound goal, that's the 30 or 60 days, not the 100 pound goal. Mm. So the time bound is important to really attack a timeline to that. Um, so those are smart goals. Now, uh, as far as keeping, you know, clients accountable and kind of going on with that, um, I like to challenge them. So the other big one is personal challenges. Uh, and I like to use this one with diet a lot because diet seems to be the one where people don't, even if they do have one good meal, they're already likely to break that streak. So when I, when I have a bad meal, I'm more likely to eat a bad meal the second time. Sure. If I have pizza, I'm more likely to reach for the ice cream. If I have a salad, I'm less likely to reach for that ice cream than after that. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build these habits of how many days can we string together of consistency? Because I know if I can keep you consistent, you'll be successful. So what right. one little thing can we do differently every single day? Um, so when I go with nutrition, it's can you have a one good day of nutrition? Eat all your meals like within our meal plan. Yep. then it's like, oh, you did great. Could you do it again? And it's like, once they've done it once, they feel like, wow, I can do this. So now all I have to do it is one more time. Right. Then when they don't make it, you know, say the third day, it's Saturday, it comes around, they break their, their streak. Now on Monday, when I see them again, I'm like, hey, congratulations, you made it two days before you had, you know, your cheat meal. Yep. Next week, 
I want to try to have three days. So my favorite thing to do is I just keep increasing that and kind of moving the carrot. Just, just a little one bit more further. Time. One more time. Further. Because what I is they'll get to one week. They'll get to two weeks. And then after six months, mm. they've their record is 15 days straight of nutrition. But guess what? That means they had 14 days, 13 days, 12 days, 11 days, 10 days. You add those up over the course <laughs> yeah. of six months. And they actually now have reached that 75, 85, 90% of being accountable. And we always encourage 10 to 15% of being loose on the diet because mm. if you've never eaten a piece of chocolate cake in three months, I feel bad for you. Like life sucks. Like yeah. just eat the cake, right? Yep. So those personal challenges were just trying to go one more, one more and, and check those wins off. Yep. So let's talk about doing something special for your clients. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, re rewards or gifts, which, you know, when you've been in the industry long enough, you start to have different relationships with your clients. And a lot of the times, if you're trying to build up this consistency of coming in and coming to the gym, having great eating habits, so on and so forth. And, and you could kind of for yourself gauge where you see victories is it's okay to give your clients something special, whether it be if you have nutritional supplements at your gym, give them a complimentary multivitamin, give them a t-shirt, give them, you know, a complimentary session, complimentary mobility session. If you've noticed good behavior, reward good behavior. This is going to sound really bad. And any of my clients or gym members out there listening, I don't mean it the way that it's going to come off. It's almost like having a dog, right? So you have a dog, they have good behavior. What do you do? You treat the dog. Hey, great job. Here's a, here's a little pepperoni or whatever that you want to give them. Great job. And it's like, so the, the pepperoni for the dog would be something to help their fitness and not the other way around. So whatever that you have in your gym that you can treat people with when you see good behavior is going to reward them for more behavior down the road. And I'm not saying that you have to do it every single week. Maybe it's every so often, like just give them again, Kyle said a carrot. Here you go. Did awesome. So give them some sort of benefit or reward. If you just started small group, we did a complimentary small group week for all of our members like, Hey, you're doing a great job. Come in for a complimentary free trial week for our SGT, whatever that you might have. You know, we a lot of the times will do complimentary um, nutritional days where we cut up a bunch of bars or, you know, I, I get a lot of products from other companies like we have boxes and boxes of Tiger Bomb at our gym. So it's like, here, have some Tiger Bomb, have some Tiger Bomb. So little things like that go a long way. So reward those behaviors when you see them. Uh, yeah. And actually, and you mentioned uh, kind of like gifts because you're you're building up this kind of emotional behavioral attachment to, you know, you mentioned like the physical things, but if I can transfer that over to like emotional things, sometimes these quote unquote gifts are not necessarily a package, but like um, birthdays, even like acknowledging yeah. a birthday and wishing them a happy birthday. Like you don't necessarily have to buy them a gift, right? but acknowledging yeah. those certain events and things in people's lives to build up a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to cancel on you if you don't care about the person you're canceling on. If anyone's ever canceled like their hairdresser, and it's funny coming from me with no hair, but you know, my girlfriend has, you know, your, your ladies are scheduling out their haircut like four to four months out for some of these hairdressers. And it's yeah. a big deal. If you cancel on your hairdresser that like you've built this relationship with, they get their haircut for 10 years, she'll have like something emergency come up and be like, I can't cancel this appointment because her book's been booked out. It's so important to her. I don't want to screw her over. Like I'm going to show up and make sure I get my haircut done on this day. I will move everything else in my schedule around. Mm -hmm. When you don't care about that person, it's easy to be like, nah, screw their business. I right. like it's, it's too hard for me. So I'm going to cancel. Mm -hmm. And that builds up this relationship of when it comes to the agreements or, you know, signing that PT contract, I put that yeah. in quotes, that yeah. dirty word, right? Yeah. Uh, no, no contracts. But they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna see it as a contract with you and they're gonna be like I'm up. So I'm not gonna renew. And that's kind of goes into that renewal part, but that's also accountability is they get excited to come back to you. So I think that's really important building up those kinds of relationships. Because it I I hit so often that uh, the client that's like, oh, I'm just going to uh, I'm sorry, I can't make it in today. I'm uh, I got a, a trip next week, I'm slammed, I got a lot of errands and this and that, and they cancel on me. I know 
I have not been there for them because they would never cancel on me to go run errands if I did my job right. Yeah. Uh, it's very rare that any of my clients ever cancel on me. Very, very rare. And because they don't cancel on me, I don't cancel on them. And that's another big thing about like accountability is as much as they count on you, you have to count on them too. So I, I'm not canceling on people. I don't care if my uh, travel schedule requires me to drive an hour to another one of our centers and I have an appointment at 6 a.m. with you at my center. I'm going to drive to my center at 6 a.m and increase my drive time to an hour and 30 minutes because that's when your appointment is. And everybody's always like, well, why did you come in for just this one appointment? Why why didn't you cancel or move me? I was like, because this is your time. You made a commitment to me the same way I'm making a commitment to you. This is my job to be here and do your sessions. And when you build that relationship, like Kyle was just talking about, it becomes much more challenging for people to just not follow what you say and and, and float off and, and not renew their personal training programs, not contracts. Remember, that's a naughty word. We don't say contracts. Uh, to go along with that, with building relationships, you should always know what your clients do for work. You should know where they work. You should know their spouses or significant others' names. You should know their kids' names. And do they have dogs, where they live, what they drive for cars? You should be able to have an immense conversation with them if you went out and sat with them for two hours. You should know all about their lives and you can share with them your life too. That that relationship is, in my opinion, 10 times more important than anything that you do in the gym because they trust you. And when they trust you, they're more willing to follow your instructions and directions with fitness. So build that rapport, build that relationship. Um, and just to add to that is when you have that relationship, they also take constructive criticism better. Oh my God. And what I, what I mean by that is, yeah, like if you have the client that truly has bought in and believes in you, you can sit them down and have those hard conversations about some of their lifestyle decisions. If you don't have that relationship and you sit down with someone that's overweight and say, you know, you're just not listening to me. You know, all you had to do is just not eat the pizza last night and you'd feel a lot better today and your workout would be better and you're just being stupid. Now, it's a quick way to lose a client. But if you have a relationship with someone that's built on that trust and respect, you can say stuff like that to them because you can <laughs> I did put them last back week. place. <laughs> I did and, last. and I'm not saying that that's necessarily for everyone, but I build up such an emotional connection with my people that we have those hard conversations. And when you can have a hard conversation with your client, that's how they get success. That's how they really make that turn. And, you know, if you're really good, you'll, you'll find a way to bridge that gap. I had a client last week, uh, she came in and we only did like four or five episodes or episodes, <laughs> exercises. I got my mind on podcast episodes, exercises. And she was just like flat out exhausted after doing, you know, eight things. And I was like, well, what's going on? She goes, oh, I just realized I didn't eat today. And I looked at her, I was like, well, why'd you do that? And it, mind you, I've been with her for years and years and years. She goes, I don't know. I just couldn't find the time. And I was like, so we're, we're going to make the time next time to eat. So you don't feel like this next time. She goes, yeah, I have protein bars in my bag. I was like, okay. I was like, so here's what you do on your phone. You just put in like two hours before that you're supposed to come here, a reminder to eat. I was like, I get that way sometimes too, where I'm so caught up in work, but I was like, you have to eat before you come in here. I was like, I can't have you like this is not beneficial to you. I was like, I don't want you to get hurt. And she was like, okay, cool. Like I had like just straight up on the floor conversation with her. It's like, don't do that. Like you're not helping yourself. I want you to be safe. Like that's my number one thing, be safe. And you know, then we went on training. She felt a little bit better after that, so on and so forth. But if that's a brand new client and I said it like that, it wouldn't go over so well, unfortunately. But having those relationships, have those tough conversations with people. It, it, it's so much easier, I promise. All right. So we we went a little dark there for a second. So I'm going to spin this thing back to fun. Oops. Uh, fun. <laughs> no, well, I, I went there because yeah. these are hard things in training. And right. we'd be lying if uh, if everything was uh, fun and rainbows when you're doing personal training. These people's yeah. health and their lives. So yeah. it gets serious. Uh, so to spin around... Um, and to wrap up our last section that we have for this is, is trying to make it fun and more enjoyable so that they look forward to seeing you. Mm. Unless they're like a power lifter, they don't really want to come in and set new one rep maxes every couple of weeks because it takes a lot out of them and it's exhausting and miserable. Mm. Same thing on uh, the flip side of that power lifter doesn't want to come in and do like hit workouts every single day and jump around. 
So find the thing that they enjoy the most and find ways to work in their program, the things they need and the things they want to do. So that comes from the training side of things. Now I want to lead with that because that's still first and foremost, most important, but to add fun on top of that, I really like bring a friend because there's two things that happen here. One, it's a lead gen for you. So we always talk about referrals and building your business. So if they bring a friend, they get to have their social community with them while they're working out. You get to meet maybe a few different friends over a couple of weeks. Maybe you get some new clients out of it. But at the end of the day, they won't cancel on you because they're like, oh, it's Saturday morning. Uh, I'm going to go out with so-and-so for, oh, hey, bring them. Let's do a workout. And then you guys can go have your mimosas. All right, perfect. Now I've got better commitment with my client and they got to have fun and enjoy their Saturday morning while still getting their workout in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I unfortunately have not had a lot of success with with that piece, Kyle. So like, how would you go about having someone bring a friend in? You know, we always talk about it and it's like, oh, you know, they can bring you in and then it's six weeks later and they haven't brought them in. Like what, what would be your advice to having someone bring a friend in for a workout other than just mentioning it to them? Well, so, I mean, that goes back to that. We're having these conversations all the time. So I'm finding out who their best friends are. You Mm -hmm. mentioned like knowing their spouse's names, their kids' names, uh, which by the way, you can invite them in. It doesn't have to be a friend, right? Right. It could be, yeah, bring your kids. Kids want to see you work out. You want to establish health for, you know, for them in the future. They get to hang out and watch. Um, But back to the friend thing. No, I'm asking, hey, you know, does your friend work out? Yes, they do. Well, why are you going to cancel on me to go out for breakfast or lunch on Saturday with them? They work out. Tell them to not skip their workout class over there. Come with you. And then from here, you guys can go have mimosas. And I'm telling the story because it literally just happened a few weeks ago. So it's like top of mind, the mimosa thing. But like that kind of stuff happens. And then I just work it in. Now, in the past, if I've run like a bring a friend program type of deal, uh, that's just simply like, hey, I'm trying to grow my business. I'm looking for people, bring a friend with you. You guys can work out. It'll be a good time. Uh, That's more of like the referral thing, but I'm using the bring a friend as like working out the excuses from canceling my sessions. Yeah. We actually have a a refer friend pro mo like that we run all the time at our gym. So we have two of them. We have a membership promo that if you bring a friend or, or spouse or kid in and they register for a membership program, the uh, referrer, so the person who is already at the gym, they get a month free dues, whether that be $50, $60, whatever it is. If they then get that friend to sign up for personal training for at least hours of personal training, we give both people $100 off their program. Nice. It's worked out really well for us. And my coaches do a really good job of asking for referrals. And the point that I was trying to make with Kyle is, you know, if we ask, it's not just one time that you ask for a referral. It, it's like 20 times that you have to ask and and just keep, I don't want to use the word pester them, but just keep bringing it up in conversation. Hey, you mentioned this friend that was want to come in. Didn't you say that your husband wanted to start exercising again? I'd love for you to bring him in here. I've, I've got some time in the next couple of weeks. We can do a complimentary consultation. I know it's important for him to, to feel better. He's got a bad back, what have you. So, you know, just ask, ask, ask. And that community portion is very, very crucial. That's why Orange Theory does so much business. That's why CrossFit does so much business. It's that community aspect and pushing each other and, and going to the gym together to have a great time. I, I, w- I would say that most of our clients and our new members that are at this gym are all referrals that we get from people because they have fun when they come in. And my team's really fun and everybody wants to just come hang out with us and be awesome. So be awesome. Uh, and to add a little tool there now, in 2023, do like trainers have business cards anymore? Or we kind of like got away from 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 paper things. So I'll give you a story. <laughs> so me and one of the vice presidents the other day, we did like a, a business kind of uh, retreat where we went and hit up all the businesses along like our, our road. So we went to the car dealerships. We went to this. We went to that. And every time that we would go into it, he'd be like, oh, Dayton, give him your business card. I was like, yeah, I don't business cards out and it's like they're just gonna throw them away it's like i'll give you like a flyer or i'll give you my linkedin or i'll give you my instagram but i i don't have business cards and the business cards on the back that say like oh bring a friend in for free or get a complimentary personal training session i think that people really just throw those away it's the conversation that does more than a piece of paper so 
that's actually where I wanted to go is the other options besides just a business card. But before we move on from business cards, if you are someone that uses a business card, and I'll be honest, I'm a little old school. I have business cards. Now on my business card is a QR code that goes directly to like my Instagram, my website, yeah. my booking, my like free eBooks and things like that. So I have, I have the QR code go to my internet portal that has all of my things. So that helps. Um, but the other thing that you can do on a business card to get them to not throw it away is to write their name on it. Um, this Ooh. is a trick that people have been using for a while that I think works really well. When you give someone a business card, they put it in their pocket, they go to do their laundry, they look at this card and they go, I, yeah, I don't need this. I work with Dayton. I know Dayton. And they throw the card away. When they pull the card out, and I'm here with John. I gave John, my client, the card, and it says Steve on it. Shoot, I can't throw this away. This is for Steve. Mm. There's this psychological switch that they see that this no, this doesn't belong to me. Someone's named on this. This goes to Steve. I now put that in my wallet. And when I see Steve, I actually give it to him. Um, you have like a 10 times more likely for that business card to reach the person, the target person, if you write on it. And what the hell? You've been hanging on to that information for years and you've never shared that with me, man. Come on. I'm so sorry. I feel like <laughs> I feel like I've been doing that forever. That's like oh, my big oh, thing is great. you have to personalize the business card. Because if you and take it a step further, if you want to be like really crazy with it, Steve, thanks for your interest. I look for call me. Yeah. Hand write your cell phone number. Right. Like that it's like writing type of on stuff. a napkin and going up to like someone that you see at a bar and being like, "Hey, call me." And it's like, it's, but it's not creepy, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, hopefully. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, if, and if you're not using business cards, this is. I do like the QR codes, which are business cards. Uh, just QR they, codes are great. They um, really are. Now, if you have something on your phone, I know they also have those like wallet cards with QR codes. Like you don't hand it out; you just scan it. Uh, but handing out Instagram, I think Instagram, if you have a social media presence for your fitness business, mm -hmm. it is your business card because now I can see you. I can read about the way you train your clients. I can see how you coach exercises, but whatever you're doing on your socials, that is your business card now. Yep. So I make people follow me, follow them back. And now I have targeted people that I can like DM about stuff that's going on. Sure. So I want to summarize some of the stuff that we've talked about just to make some bullet points here. So if we talk about ways that we can make your clients accountable, I think that the first one needs to be progress. So tracking their progress, uh, talking about weigh-ins, making small but realistic goals and congratulating on those small and realistic goals, whether it be weight loss, uh, increasing weight for strength exercise. Hey, you did a good job not eating pizza five times a week, or, you know, you went for a walk four times this week. So that that's the first thing that I want to bring up is just like checking in on that progress and, and doing those random check-ins. Having those smart goals is appropriate as well. Personal challenges, which Kyle talked about your challenges to eat four times this week, your protein shake or whatever it is, or four times this week, you are going to walk on the treadmill. And, and as the fitness professional, all of you can determine what those personal challenges are for people. We talked about rewards and, and giving people something for whether it be birthdays, doing a great job. And that ties into building up the rapport and the relationship, which I think with holding people accountable is probably the most important thing is if you have that relationship, you can have those hard conversations with individuals, which they'll listen to you. If, if you don't treat them like someone just off in the distance and you have those hard conversations with them, they're more likely to listen to you because they respect you. They know everything about you. You know everything about them. So it goes much, much better than if you just started two weeks with them because your relationship and rapport hasn't built up with them. We talked about bringing a friend, asking for referrals, bringing up that community that's in your gym, whether it be a big box or a studio, that's of utter importance that you have people that they know in that facility because they're much more likely to stay and have a good time. And I will add to that that we didn't talk about, Kyle, is if you're in the facility with a brand new client, take that client, walk around, introduce them to all of the coaches and introduce them to all of their clients too. Because if they come and see you at Tuesday at 11, typically the coaches will have the same client at Tuesday at 11. And then that becomes like a little click. And they like go out to lunch afterwards or they go grab coffee. And 
they're much more likely to come in with you and exercise and not cancel and not do this because they feel also a commitment to the people that are there at Tuesday at 11. And if they don't come in, all the clients are like, where the hell is Arlene? Why isn't she here today? I need her here to work out next to me. And be like, well, um, she's away this week. Well, that's unacceptable. <laughs> so like they hold each other accountable too. They really do. But you have to build the relationship with them, but also the relationship with the other people. And if you work in a facility where individuals are trying to steal your clients, other trainers, then that's not the facility for you. But at my space, all of us were good about that stuff. I've got a coach going on vacation in a couple of weeks. And I met with him yesterday. I was like, this person's training with who? Okay, cool. This person's training with who? Because we have that relationship and rapport with not only the one trainer and client, but all of us too. And that's mm -hmm. the accountability. Like they feel accountable to come in, not just with that coach, but with us as a company. I went on a little rant. I'm sorry. No, that's perfect. Uh, and with that, it was a great recap and a little rant. And I'd like to sign off there. So cool. Thanks everyone for listening. We'll see you later, Dane. All right. See you guys.